welcome back. Uh, so let me uh, now uh, talk a little bit uh, about the specifics of uh, how uh, the data from police organizations can be collected and what kind of analysis uh, uh, can be done to find out some interesting things. Here is one research question that you can, here is one question that you can think about. Uh, objectives uh, of the study that I'm going to be talking about is whether online social media can support police to get actionable information about crime and residents' opinion about policing activities in urban cities in India. So that's the goal. So let's try and see if we can actually teach this uh, objective uh, to study uh, some data from uh, Facebook and Twitter and uh, make some useful inferences. So let me just break this objective uh, into pieces, which is can we use Facebook to support police to get actionable information? What is an actionable information? Actionable information is something like uh, do this. Can you actually get this done? Can I mean, I'm having a problem in the street. There is traffic issues in the uh, road. There is a pothole which is broken on the street. A car broken down. So these are actionable information that police organizations can take from the post and actually use it for decision making. And residents' opinion, of course, what, what people think about police, what are they talking about police is also useful information for uh, police organizations. And so before I get into further, I think there was a question in the uh, forum. Uh, asking about what is re-identification. I thought I'll actually mention it uh, here rather than actually typing it in the uh, uh, forum itself. Uh, so re-identification is nothing but uh, take some information. You want to actually, you've got a, a information about PK. There is some publicly available information which is uh, which has no reference to PK. For example, if you remember uh, the Nathaniel Sweeney slide where we talked about uh, voters record and medical record. Just in medical records, they are actually identifiable. Just in order records also they are identifiable. If you put together the identification actually becomes much more stronger. You are able to uniquely identify more people with more data put together. For example, again, let me go to my own example. You can take uh, some publicly available information about me on some website saying, oh, faculty at Triple IT and things like that. And you go back to Facebook and then you use the Facebook pictures that are publicly available about me. Take those pictures connected to this post and you can say that oh this is actually PK, this is how he looks and he's actually a faculty of Triple IT. So re-identification of information um, of a particular individual of a particular thing is actually the uh, concept that we discussed uh, uh, last week. I hope that makes it clear which is uh, unidentified data sets which in the class that we talked about uh, match.com and identified data set Facebook which where there is if you are tagged they know uh, one can find out that this is you. So taking some unidentified data and using some identified data putting them together and identifying a user is actually a identification. Okay. So we did this work on uh, social networks for police and residents in India, exploring online communication. So this is a paper that uh, we, uh, I'm going to be talking about, but it's actually more than a paper that the data that I will be talking about right now. Um, so in general, actually, uh, in the last uh, two years or so, social media uh, has been used for crime prevention. It, is, it can be used effectively for finding out what people are saying. You can actually collect information, a lot of things about what is going on in the society because it's going to be very hard to have uh, police uh, organization, police personnel at every given point in time, at any given point in the society also. So you can actually get a lot of information from public uh, through these social networks which can be used to prevent crime. So essentially you can build societies which are safer if you were to actually analyze, uh, use social media services. So, uh, in terms of actually uh, the, the theme itself, uh, but the data that we looked at is actually from uh, Bangalore, Karnataka. So, in terms of methodology, what kind of data did we collect? So, keeping the goal for studying whether we can actually collect actionable information from social media, we started looking at this data. Uh, we collected data from uh, the Facebook uh, page of Bangalore City Police uh, in 2014, uh, looking at what are the posts that uh, was done. And we filtered the posts and comments because we wanted to study uh, what the public said to the police in terms of what posts that they did, what comments uh, did they say on the uh, Facebook page. 
and about uh, 1600 comments and uh, 255 posts were actually uh, collected. So in terms of methodology, there, is, there are actually multiple ways that you could actually look at this data, right? You're looking at the posts and you're looking at the comments, uh, we could analyze in different ways. So one approach that we took was uh, finding out what uh, people are talking about, which is uh, misinformation, query, traffic details, that's about the content. And then we looked at uh, the style of uh, writing. Uh, which is formal or informal and in terms of types uh, of uh, posts that was uh, showing up which is acknowledged to like or say thanks reply to so suggest a solution and uh, follow by ask for the details uh, ignored by or no reply because these are the ones that are coming from the police side citizens post and then what do the police do about it so if you look on the right hand side it says 24 categories for the public post and two categories uh, uh, for the style and four categories of the police uh, responses. Uh, so again, given that we are talking about only content, I'm injecting some uh, uh, analysis that you could do with the data uh, yourself also in terms of lexical analysis, in terms of actually the uh, content itself uh, that is uh, from the post. So if you look at the results, uh, some, some of the results are very interesting in terms of what kind of uh, uh, posts were done by citizens on these uh, on this page. Majority of the things were actually from the neighborhood uh, concerns, right? Uh, then it's appreciation, which is talking about thanks to police and uh, appreciating the efforts that uh, police does. And it kind of goes down suggestion, uh, auto driver related fraud, till traffic uh, issues. And if you look at the comments and the likes, the comments uh, for um, uh, actions like appreciation are actually higher than the comments for satisfaction. Whereas if you look at the likes, uh, likes for satisfaction, appreciation, and success stories are actually very high. It's probably very intuitive uh, that uh, how uh, the police uh, post gets reactions from the society. The likes are actually pretty high. Uh, for satisfaction, appreciation post, and for such stories compared to some of the other ones. So this just gives you a sense of the analysis that you could do in any kind of data that you collect. You remember we talked about uh, Boston Blast and Hurricane Sandy uh, and uh, those kind of events in the context of uh, uh, credibility and trust. So here we're doing similar kinds of analysis, similar kinds of questions that we're asking, but we're actually using different sets of data and different kinds of graphs that we're producing. So this will help you to get a sense of what kind of uh, uh, what kind of posts are actually showing up on these uh, pages, and what kind of reactions are uh, being seen on for these posts also. Similar to the uh, analysis that we did in Boston and Hurricane Sandy, we could do the uh, geospatial analysis also with this data here. The one on the top is showing you the uh, posts that are coming from different parts of Bangalore uh, for the. Uh, Posts that we saw in the uh, page, and of course, uh, one could do some heat map. One could do find out where are the places from where majority of the posts are coming, and we could use that for making some decisions. So, given the goal was actionable information, we were actually focused on uh, finding out uh, from the content what kind of information can be drawn. So here is one post which talks about temporal uh, data at least which can be drawn. Time between 5.30 and 6 p.m., location, blah, blah, blah. Uh, not a single poll is posted here. I was waiting for an auto work circle, blah, blah, blah. Right? So this gives them, this gives the police organizations a good sense of what time is it, what location is it, what should be done, what is the problem. It's easy to actually color this information. If it was not given in this form, if, it, if this information was not there, the police has to actually ask, saying uh, uh, what location is it, what time is it, and things like that. Uh, so if you look at the communication style, the style is also uh, interesting that uh, a lot of discussions that happen on uh, from the police side is actually very formal. Right, formal versus uh, uh, informal. Uh, there's a request to take action on railway uh, station. This is from the citizens, uh, parking contractors. Uh, they are not issuing parking slips. Right. Kudos to the ba ba Banaswadi traffic police team. My salute, and then this is a post for appreciation. So from the police, if it counts, it's almost going to be always formal. 
And stay visible, of course, is the point that I said earlier, which is Facebook and any social network for that matter can become a way by which police can actually connect with the society more strongly. And I'm sure as we are going through the course, uh, you will also start looking at, I hope you will also start looking at the uh, police pages of your local city uh, the, from, your, from your location and actually start seeing what kind of posts they are doing, what kind of uh, things uh, uh, that they are looking for, what kind of interactions are they having with the police. So the whole body of knowledge, body of research, body of work uh, is to actually look at increase the uh, communicative policing, right? So you can actually increase uh, the interactions with the society to get more uh, uh, information from them. Of course, these are some details. I'll go through them uh, slightly quickly. Average time response, 30 hours. Maximum time was 211 hours. A minimum time was about four minutes. Uh, showing that there is uh, there's large uh, variance in terms of actually responses that they get. Four minutes to 211 hours. So that's a lot of difference uh, in terms of the time response that they get. So here are the different types of uh, cores that uh, come from police and the kind of engagement that uh, they have. Right? So acknowledge 21% uh, of the post, police actually acknowledge, dear XXX, we will take all possible legal measures in this regard, thank you. And as a reply, dear XXX, please lodge a complaint, 22%, and dear XXX, this post has been forwarded to a proper police station. And about follow up is dear XXX, please provide the police station details, thank you. So this kind of tells you what kind of interactions are, are police organizations having and about uh, uh, 83 posts did not have get any response. So the goal uh, is to uh, find out, uh, one, of the, one of the interesting questions that you could also think about is how to actually have a post which will have, which will have a response from police. Right? That could be also an interesting question to look So if you, uh, if you look at the concept of finding out what citizens are worried about, what citizens are talking about, I'll go through some uh, trees, uh, word trees, so to say, in terms of actually looking at what posts the citizens are doing, how we can actually take out some useful information from these posts. So in this case, we're talking about worried as the starting point, which is from the post, you can actually look at worried uh, if somebody uh, will misuse my bike, worried that the person who has uh, duplicated my registration number will come and blah, 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 worried about they coming back to attack me. Right, so this, this concept of identifying the uh, content, textual content, and seeing what kind of posts that uh, citizens are doing can be extremely useful. If only if one can generate these uh, trees uh, in real time, it can be very useful for police to make some decisions. And if this can be done in real time to showing up, oh, currently there's a post on Facebook uh, which has uh, actionable information and the actionable information is the time, the details and the citizen's post is actually having about worried about a few things. Can be very useful. And of course, uh, direct versus uh, indirect information drawing from these posts. Direct information uh, could be that I, it is going on with me. I am actually going through the problem or I am actually part of the situation that I am talking about. Sometimes it could be indirect, which is uh, dear DCP, though I stay at JP Nagar, but being part of a K, uh, SFC layer, Prava, blah, blah, blah. I am not part there, but I'm, I, I see a problem there, I am letting you know. It could be that my friend uh, uh, says this, my friend lives there and there, and, and I regardingly, uh, I, I post uh, a post on, on Facebook. I do a post on Facebook about a friend that who lives in a different location, not about myself. So there are these kinds of uh, posts also, which is directly about myself and indirectly uh, about somebody else. And of course, uh, I meaning uh, it, it, it is probably very intuitive uh, to realize that you could take the uh, content on these social networks and actually look for accountability of both sides, for example. Right, accountability of police and accountability for the citizens also. How we can do that, we could look at the post and see how fast they are responding, what kind of responses they are, uh, uh, it is coming and how citizens are also responding to these uh, queries that the police is making. So accountability can be a good question to ask from the post that is collected from the social network. 
And of course, uh, the little that we have seen, little that uh, is being looked at, uh, there is also mutual accountability that is going on. Citizens see, think that uh, police should be doing it and police think that citizens should be doing it. There is accountability uh, in terms of because this platform is publicly available. And of course, uh, police organizations respond to these uh, posts and uh, requests for information and uh, follow up on things also, making themselves accountable for the activities that is uh, going on. Uh, citizens accept that they are also accountable to make the city safe. Citizens also agree that uh, they should be participating in these uh, activities in terms of posting, interacting with police, giving information and uh, uh, making sure that the city is safe. So if you look at uh, the tree again, earlier the example was buried, now if you look at uh, the concept of why, so why these illegal practices are not being stopped, why don't you stop tobacco, why this, why that, right? So this could also be a good way to look at the content and uh, call out the actionable information from these posts, right? So these are the things that you can do, these are the types of analysis that you can do in terms of uh, what uh, citizens are talking about what police organizations are actually posting. Of course, uh, police can also understand uh, needs and wants, right? Police can encounter fear and anxiety if they know residents' expectations like needs and wants. I want something living in this place. I want some uh, specific safety. I know that this is happening and complaining. Please take care of it. If only if all this can be done using um, the content using the information that are coming on social media, it could be very helpful. Of course, it's not that uh, only this is the only source for making all these judgments. Uh, looking at a few more examples in terms of need, need to get punished, blah, 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 need to be so and so, need to hang this guy, need to do uh, more research on why that is going on, need such information for so this kind of tree information can be actually very helpful. I think I've emphasized enough about this tree. I'll go through. So this is about needs, uh, which is what is needed by the citizens and what do they want also. Want to hear more of these. Want to see the punishment of XYZ. Want to and delete the rest. Want to say thanks to PCPC, sir. Right? This kind of uh, uh, analysis in terms of wants and needs which is also connecting to the actionable information that we talked about is very helpful. So now just keeping these things in mind, the data that we have collected from uh, uh, the Facebook uh, Bangalore City Police, what are the things that we could think about? Uh, well, just a quick summary of what we looked at also, right? In terms of uh, the data, one could actually look at collecting uh, all this information and helping understand actionable information. Actionable information can in the sense that I showed you, it was just a tree, but how do you actually take this and give it to uh, police organizations to look at? It could be that uh, the same tree could be shown, but I think highlighting some posts saying that uh, here is a post that you should look at more carefully and uh, probably even proposing what kind of post to be given and uh, for a specific post, here is a template for the reply that you should produce and things like that. Increasing the productivity of the police organizations looking at these posts can be very, very useful. Of course, we saw that uh, um, both citizens and police are actually accountable because they are actually interacting in this public forum. And of course, uh, there is also understanding of fear, understanding of wants, understanding of needs uh, for, from the citizens for police also. With that, I'll stop with this part of the uh, lecture, which is, so to, in this week we looked at uh, how uh, initially we just started off with privacy, closing up the topic on privacy. Then we looked at different police organizations, uh, Facebook handles, why they should do, what kind of uh, posts show up on these uh, uh, Facebook pages and Twitter handles, what kind of handles exist. And then we looked at specifically analyzing the post for identifying actionable information. With this, I'll stop this lecture.